You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles, Series 5, Episode 2. Thanks for listening back to the Geekly Chronicles. This show was recorded on the 14th of October 2016. This version of the show isn't quite the same as the one that went out live, as we've had to edit out all of the songs. It's nothing personal. We're just big fans of making sure artists get paid for the great things they create. If you want to listen back to the show in its full musical glory, wow. head over to our Mixcloud channel, where you'll find every episode of the Geekly Chronicles as it was meant to be heard. Ooh. Ooh. That's mixcloud.com forward slash G-K-L-Y-C-O. Thanks again for listening. Hello. Hello! 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 And welcome again to the new series of the Geekly Chronicles. Episode 2. I know! We survived episode 1 and we are here yet again. Well, we're not all here. That's very true. This week we're a presenter down as Kez is currently off enjoying some half decent weather in sunny Hawaii. However, we will be speaking to Kez, uh, probably live from a beach, no doubt, later in tonight's show. That is right. But what a show we've got for you in the week that Norway's Prime Minister was caught playing Pokemon Go in Parliament. And in the week that you can now buy a pub with a waterfall attached. The waterfall where Kevin Costner got naked in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And it's also a week in which you can get presidential toilet paper. No, that's not toilet paper fit for a president. It's toilet paper with the faces of US presidential candidates on it. Not only that, but from this week, you could also rent a Super Mario themed room in Lisbon, Portugal on Airbnb. Oh my gosh. In all of those weeks, it's time for the Geekly Chronicles. And we've got all of your favourite features tonight, including Would You Fund It, The Tumble Fumble, and another winning word. Uh, Kaz and I have also prepared a report from fans at the Star Trek convention in Birmingham that we attended last weekend. Uh, There will also be a twist on our usual game of geeks, where Kez will be asking the questions all the way from Hawaii. Oh, gosh. Don't know how I feel about that. Mm. I've just I've just got my position of power as quiz master. And it's gone. And it's gone. We're confusing our listeners. I know. Like, uh, uh, just already. Oh, what are we like? Yes. What are we like indeed? And uh, later in the show, rather excitingly, we'll be speaking to brand new egghead Beth McClure Webster. And if you've no idea what an egghead is, we'll be clearing that one up for you as well. Aren't we helpful? Uh, yes. We will, of course, be playing your requests, so do send those in. Uh, tweet us at GKLYCO or drop us a message in our chat room. Yeah, it's also nice to have you in the chat room, just just to generally hang out, get yeah, involved with the out. show. Uh, so, let's get cracking. We'll be starting off our Winning Words competition in just a moment, but first, here's a song that I think accurately sums up today's show. You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. We know what you did last summer, and honestly, we're impressed. So, uh, Chris, how do you turn a duck into a jazz artist? I have no idea, Catherine. You uh, you put it in the microwave until it's Bill Weathers. Oh, dear. Well, at least we've got that out the way early in the show. Hey, that is one of my f- all-time favourite jokes. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first time I heard that, I laughed, even though I didn't know who Bill Weathers was at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, true. dear. I just, I just instinctively knew it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, well... Anyway. Yeah, moving (laughs) Uh, on. It's competition time. It is. In our last show, we launched the Winning Words competition, uh, in which you can win a bundle of Geekly merch uh, just by listening out for a winning word. Ooh, yes. We did. Last time, the winning word was phalange, and Elaine called in and won herself a stylish Geekly tote bag, among other fun Geekly items. We have retweeted a picture of Elaine's cat investigating the uh, Geekly tote bag. That was so cute. (laughs) Uh, And there was also a bonus prize from Terry. Terence Eden's Five of Fun Tumblr. That's right. Uh, she won a set of Tetris fridge magnets, of which I would be incredibly jealous uh, if I didn't already own a set. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but that was last time, and this time we need a new word, mainly because I've already said phalange a grand total of twice now. And, of course, a new mystery prize. We'll be revealing that prize a little later in the show, uh, but first, let's get us a word. This week's winning word is... Cyclops. There you go. That's the word. So remember, if you hear any of us say the winning word at any point in the show, except Hattie, obviously, she doesn't count, give us a call 
uh, the numbers are on our website. Uh, and if you're first, you could be in with a shot of winning a geekly themed bundle of joy. Here's Hattie with the details. If you hear the winning word, give us a call in the UK on 020 3389 6245 or in the US on 415 287 9705. You might just win something. Calls cost the standard geographic rate from mobiles and BT landlines. Other networks may vary and international calls will cost significantly more. Lines close at the end of the show. Please do not try to enter if you are listening back to the podcast as the competition has closed, but you may still be charged. For full terms or to find another regional number, visit gkly.co slash win. And lines open now. Listen out for the winning word, and if you hear it, give us a ring. All the details are on the website. Uh, we're going to play another song for you. Remember to keep getting those requests in. You can tweet us at GKLYCO on Twitter or uh, appear in our chat room, the little box on the website or the GKLY channel on Freenode. Uh, and send us, send us a request. Tell us what you would like to hear. For now, uh, here's that new 21 Pilots song that everyone's talking about. You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Would you fund it time? Yes, it is. Uh, now, last time, for those of you that don't know, Would You Fund It is our feature uh, where we pitch ideas to you, the listeners, and you tell us whether or not you you would you would fund it. It's like crowdfunding without the funding or the crowd. Basically, hmm. yeah. You don't have to actually give us your money, but if you did, would would you? for this idea yeah it's um, so clear it's it's impressive yeah <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to confuse our listeners at all it's 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 all good uh so last time you pitched the idea of astley's baps which got funded with 100 percent of the vote impressive why thank you uh i did um i like to think people saw the potential of actually being able to you know rick roll people yeah mm-hmm. roll I get it. I see what you're doing there. But that, of course, puts you in the lead at the start of this series and means it's the next person's go to pitch an idea. So, whose turn is it this week? This week, it's Chris's pitch. Yes, it is. I'm not really sure why I from asked. From the massive but... pool of people that we have to choose from. <laughs> yes. I'm not really sure why I asked. I don't know. Radio excitement and mystery. Mm, what not? Anyway. So, <laughs> my idea is, you know that you can go... Uh, to the Crystal Maze experience now mm. in London. Yeah, yeah. Um, and run around that wonderful quiz show. Well, game show, not quiz show. There's no quiz involved. Um, and uh, and experience it for yourself. I wondered about other things that would translate well into like a real world experience sort of thing where you could go and, and sort of live give something. It something else that you could give the kind of laser tag treatment. Exactly. It's like it's it's like laser tag. Um that sort of running around making a fool of yourself, having enormous fun uh thing. So I was wondering what to turn into an experience and it hit me. The the perfect video game that you could you could possibly have as a, as a real world thing you can go and visit. Shall we have a listen? That's. Do you love Pac Man? Do you feel restricted by your screen? Do you wish you could be more round and yellow? It sure gets lonely playing Pac Man all day. Join us in our 32,000 square foot immersive real-life Pac-Man experience where you can collect balls, run from ghosts, and wear a skin-tight yellow unitard with up to seven friends. I feel like a yellow ninja sneaking around this maze. Be pursued by our real-life Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde as you charge around our maze collecting pack dots in your pack pack. You should have seen that ghost face when I slapped a cherry on it. Play Pac-Man for real. Get your tickets on our website now. Live action Pac-Man. Nice. <laughs> I think it's got potential. I think running around a darkened maze, being chased by ghosts and collecting balls is good. It would be fun. So like you have kind of scare actors and stuff that work at theme parks at Halloween. I suppose yeah. you'd kind of get those in to kind ghost of play actors. the ghosts and yeah. things and be ghost actors. Okay, I get that. Yeah, you. something like that. Um, I, it reminds me of a game I have actually played um, in Bristol, where I'm originally from. There's a festival 
called the Interesting Games Festival or IGFest. And I there was this game um, called Arcade Anarchy. Wow. Where you're split into, I think, three or four teams of about four or five people. And you are handed a giant tetromino. <laughs> <laughs> and then your task is to run from one end of the street to the other. Uh, and you have to dodge video game characters who are getting in your way. So there was like a Donkey Kong, a Pac-Man, a Space Invader, that sort of thing, a Mario. Um to get to a giant Tetris grid at the bottom of the street and place your Tetromino. And the first team to get to fill in the entire grid wins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I realise how odd that sounds now that I describe it. But yeah, that was fun. And I feel like the, the sort of excitement of retro gaming can, can apply to a Pac Man experience. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, if you think the uh, live-action Pac-Man experience should exist, then do let us know. Vote now at gkly.co slash fundit. Yes, you do. And we'll be checking back with the results uh, from Would You Fund It a bit later in the show. We'll give you a little reminder and see how it's doing. You got 100% last episode, I so I've, I've got a hard act to follow. Yep, the, the, the bar has been set. Yep. It's up here. The gauntlet has been... That doesn't work on radio. Down. It's high. Yep. The gauntlet was thrown down. I've been slapped in the face by the glove. And uh, and now I have to duel. Mm -hmm. So if you like the sound of uh, live action <laughs> Pac-Man, go vote now. <laughs> and I mean, uh, who doesn't? Uh, you can also uh, head over to our Twitter account to vote. Because uh, we have also tweeted a poll. Nice. So, yeah. Um... In a moment, we'll be having a look at the, the weirder of the news stories that have happened this week. You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Catherine, will you be making an offer on the Green Dragon pub with the Kevin Costner waterfall? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, if it was somewhere that Alan Rickman had gotten naked, I'd be meeting with my bank manager instead of being here. But you know, as it is, <laughs> I'm, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> Of course, I. Of yeah, course, I could have a gallon of Alan. A gallon of Alan, nice. I like that. How could I forget your your burning love of Alan Rickman, especially? I don't know if it burns. <laughs> well, wow. it's never caused me any discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Uh. Um, <laughs> especially after your pitch of the Rickman factor for Would You Fund It last series. I mean, that was that was quite evident really that your your alan rickman yeah, I think that goes down in history as the most vehemently unfunded would you fund it <laughs> yes uh i think it, it it was i'm gonna actually check on the results just just for uh just for embarrassment purposes okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, i think it was a i think it was a resounding do not fund. that's a 100 percenter you had yeah, there yeah, catherine yeah. Uh, <laughs> That is 100%. And not in the same way that uh, Ashley's Baps was 100 percenter. Yeah, not no. not in the fun way. No. Uh, but I do know that you can't wait to get your hands on some of that presidential toilet paper. Indeed. So this is the toilet paper that has either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton's face on it. I'm guessing you get to choose which one you use. I, I hope so. I mean, I kind of, I think I'd enjoy trying to give Donald a newer, sort of even sillier hairstyle. Is, is that even possible? I mean, I mean maybe. <laughs> you know, uh, Donald Trump <laughs> looks like the sort of person that, you know, stars their hair every morning using something like a candy floss machine. <laughs> a, a candy floss machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. It just like a dip, or a, dip or and a, swoosh. Or a cotton candy machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like, like I I've always thought like maybe Donald Trump sprays his hair on out of a can every morning. <laughs> <laughs> like, like like spray cheese. Yeah, yes, exactly. But yeah, I think I could give it a pretty good go, you know, give him a give him a quiff sort of adjust my technique. That's a bit it's a bit gross when you think about it, but I I I give it a try. Anyway, um <laughs> I had zoned out there. Um <laughs> Yeah, you could probably give it a good go. I mean, yeah. you know, anything is going to look weird. <laughs> yeah. um, the now you mentioned it, a role that had kind of a surprise president on each sheet might be good. How do you mean? Like what, like a different president on each oh, sheet. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you never knew who you were going to get. Oh, yeah. 
that that could be quite then fun. Then you could choose, choose, you know, do I want to sneeze in it? Or... <laughs> yeah, how, what do I want to do with this this piece of, of this paper yeah. uh, based on based on the president that is, that mm. is on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll leave that there. Okay, um, wonderful. <laughs> how about uh, Norway's Prime Minister then uh, playing Pokemon Go in Parliament? Yeah, I know, what's up with that? That was, I mean, I understand that it's an addictive game and everything and I've been having fun playing it myself, but you shouldn't really be playing it in Parliament, should you? I mean, what sort of elected politician would seriously waste time with something so frivolous? But let me, Mr Speaker, let me be very fair to the right honourable gentleman. I followed, I followed very carefully his interview on Desert Island Discs and I think it's fair to say he's no longer a follower of Marx. He's loving Engels instead. Former Prime Minister David Cameron there. I have to say, I think Pokemon Go addiction would would go that far. i think my pokemon addiction would go that far yeah mm-hmm. that's that's very true yeah, a... I, I wouldn't be able to resist you know catching a, a pigeon in the back benches <laughs> catching a pigeon <laughs> in the back benches <laughs> now there's a thought for you yeah i mean there's a gym quite close to here uh where where we make this show and the amount of production meetings that have been interrupted by oh the gym is blue let's go take it down <laughs> Or, or build it up. I mean, or build it blue, up. Yeah, that's you know. true. If it's if it's blue, we wanna we wanna go team Mystic. Indeed, <laughs> <laughs> other Pokemon Go teams are available. Mm. Uh, it's important stuff. I I don't know. I think I think our elected representatives and particularly the leader of a country should be focusing more on policy than Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, if if I have to resist paying Pokemon while I drive, you know. I think maybe she should, you know, while she runs. <laughs> yeah, imagine know, actually in the, you know, the, the actual process of running the country. Maybe <laughs> yeah. there's um, that there's that uh, pop up that comes up on Pokemon Go, isn't there? When you when you go above like a certain number of miles per hour, you get mm. that pop up that's like, hey, you should not play Pokemon Go while driving. Maybe. Uh... You, do you think it should be able to sense when you're actually in a sort of a parliamentary chamber? Yeah, do you, like, you're like, sure you, you want to be playing Pokemon here? Do not, <laughs> do not play Pokemon Go while you are influencing you policy. Are <laughs> um, I've noticed that Kez has just put in the chat room Team Instinct for the win. Sadly, <laughs> uh, me and 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 you, Catherine, don't know what we're talking about. To which I say, oh. two against one, sucker. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's there seems to be quite a lot of love for um, for the whole Team Instinct situation in the chat room. No one from Team Valor, though. No. I don't know, maybe we don't have a Valor audience. Yeah. Although, that does give me an idea. Why not do elections by way of Pokemon Go teams? Hear me out. Hear me out. We've got, like, the three colours. Red, blue, yellow for the the main parties in this country. Elections by way of, like, number of gyms. That's a would you fund it right there. (laughs) Well, is, is that going to be your next pitch? Sort of that'll be on the next show. Three episodes time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my next pitch may well be Pokemon Go elections. You heard it here first. But remember, that's not my pitch today. You can vote on my pitch today, which was the Pac-Man thing, at gkly.co slash fund it. Uh, and you'll find links to all of the news stories that we've been talking about on our Twitter account, at gklyco. <laughs> You will. Uh, Coming up next, we'll be catching up with Kez, who is no doubt lounging in the shade of a volcano somewhere. Indeed. Don't forget to keep sending your requests in. Join our chat room, the GKLY channel on Freenode, or you can use the chat box on the website, or tweet them to us at GKLYCO. But speaking of requests, here's one right now. I have no idea what it is, and I'm slightly, slightly weirded out by the title, but... uh... (laughs) And apparently it doesn't want to play, so I might have to play something slightly more not... Tell you what, let's play a song that is relevant to Kez being in Hawaii. That would be a fun one, wouldn't it? You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Uh, Joining us on the line should be live all the way from 11 hours in the past. Uh, Should be Kez. Hello? Crossing fingers. Yep, crossing fingers. I mean, 11 Hello. hours is a long time. Hello. There we go. Yay. There you go. <laughs> <sighs> Knew you'd be there. Yes. So, um, yep, here I am. Hello from the past. Um, how is it back there? It's a lot sunnier in the past than uh, you led me to believe. 
yeah, it's sort of dark here. In the future. <laughs> <laughs> the future is a dark uh, place. Uh. So, you know, you've got that look to look forward to. <laughs> Which How is exciting. Nice. Yes. How's Hawaii? Oh, you know, it's not bad. It's currently... Uh, well, what's the temperature in, in the UK right now? Oh, God. I don't know. Earlier this afternoon, it was sort of, sort of 13 degrees. Right. So it's at least double that here. Right now, it's 11 uh, degrees outside. Okay. 11 degrees outside. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm basically at three times that temperature right now. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Cranky. Um, not too humid, though. And there's a lovely breeze. I mean, I, I hadn't quite realized how small the Hawaiian islands are. I mean, Hawaii is not just one island. It's a collection of a few islands. Um and I'm on one of the smaller ones, and it's brilliant. I mean, later on, I'm going to a party on the other side of the island, and it's almost walkable. Um, but there's a, a lovely breeze that kind of comes in from the ocean and off out to the ocean the other side and just keeps flowing over this island. So it's it's warm, but it's quite beautiful. Oh, it sounds it sounds sort of delicious. <laughs> I, guess I would describe that. Delicious. Hawaii is a US state, but this is very different. It's my first time here. It's very different to anywhere else in the world that I've been. Uh, it, it, it's very different to the rest of the US as well. They have different cuisine, different culture. They they have a different language. It's it's very much untouched by the rest of the US. I mean, it, it's technically it's closer to Australia and to Japan than it is to the US, but. Um, it's it's absolutely beautiful and I, i've been collecting a few things to, to to tell you about that are not necessarily unique to hawaii but part of hawaiian culture um so so let me share those with you yeah please go ahead first off i discovered this amazing thing called shaved ice right okay it's it's Does not ice, ice hair? cream <laughs> and it's not a slush puppy or a slushy but it's... Other brands of slush-based drink are available. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's um, it's incredible. It's like a combination of the two, and you get it in a on like on a plate, and it's okay. like a mound of ice. But they've put fresh fruit juice on it, but different bits of fruit juice. Oh, it's just incredible. Like, words can't describe it. It is absolutely amazing. And I know that this is radio, so words have to describe it. Yeah. But you, we generally are it's, bad at that with it's food. It's not solid ice because it's shaved. So you you eat it with a spoon. And you know, b- before it gets thing? slushy, and it, it's just absolutely incredible, and it's so cooling. Um, you know, the um, I came over here to, to to be with some friends for a wedding, and they had a shaved ice station at their wedding yesterday. So I mm. naturally took it upon myself to sit there and sample all of the flavors they had. Of course, and I can honestly tell you that the combination of lemon, lime, guava, and strawberry with fresh strawberries on the top is just ah uh, out of this world. That sounds pretty um, special. But everything here is fresh fruit, and a lot of the fruit is grown locally. And if it's not fresh fruit, it's sushi and it's fresh fish. A uh, huge kind of Japanese influence on the cuisine and culture. But it's all fresh. I mean, I had uh, some sushi yesterday that was made in front of me, and it was rolled in front of me about 30 yards away from where the fish was actually caught that morning. Uh, just incredible uh kind of uh culture here for the food i'm surprised they don't have like a conveyor belt sort of thing like like you know you actually do unfortunately not a lot of these places like um like in the uk we would have like a pop-up donut stand or maybe some fresh cockles on a beach um here they have like pop-up sushi people that just have like a table and a sushi mat and will just make you uh sushi from fish Mm. they've caught that morning um this sounds like my kind of place Oh, I know. Tell me about it. But it's uh, what is also incredible is that it's not just there, there's such a mishmash of, of cultures of influence. So there's a lot of tra- kind of traditional Hawaiian stuff. The fruit juice I'm obsessed with is guava and strawberry juice, and it's incredible. Um, but bizarrely, there's even uh, European influences here as well. So one of the most popular breakfast items, and I have it here, is called a, a, a malasada. Which right. is like a, a fancy donut, but there is a world famous bakery called Leonard's Bakery, and there is one. They have one shop here in Hawaii, and people travel from all over the world to try things at Leonard's Bakery. And I here bought yesterday, ready for me to try on the show, a malasada, and it's a it's a hot uh, donut with um, a filling inside, and this one's kind of a 
a, a dark chocolatey filling, but it's got um, a sweet and sour sugar on the top. Okay, interesting. And it's just absolutely incredible. I'm just going to bite into it now. Oh. Bite away. Oh, it's <laughs> absolutely amazing. The benefit um, of this food segment is that Catherine and I don't currently have our mouths full, so we can <laughs> fill for you. Yeah. <laughs> We yeah, no, it's incredible. Um, I would bring some here. back to yeah. the studio with me, but there are Ooh. very strict laws here on putting food in your luggage. Uh, oh. so, so I can't, but I might see if I can import some of that uh, fruit juice because it's amazing. But yes, I would say Hawaiian culture is quite agreeing with me. I might just stay out here if you two fancy uh, relocating the studio. <laughs> I bring it out very, very slowly so in hand incredible, luggage. An incredible commute. Well, I've got, like, I'm looking like... I've got a beach right in front of me and I look to the left and there's an active volcano. I actually have, we could have our own secret volcano layer. Yeah, but then if the volcano goes off, we're pretty stuffed. Yeah, but then so is everyone in this region, so we wouldn't exactly be dealing with it on our own. Well, yeah, but <laughs> the, the, the shared misery of, of dying in fiery ash is not as comforting as in other situations. <laughs> yeah, I see your point. Yeah. There's misery left. At least in a hundred years time, Bastille might write a song about us. This is true. <laughs> so, Super Mario being Airbnb, what do you think about that? Yeah, and no, I love the idea. I've been staying in a hotel since I got here. Um, I would have loved to have stayed in an Airbnb somewhere more authentic, but it's a very, very popular island to stay on. Um, so as much as, you know, Turn down service and fresh towels is nice. I would love to stay in a Mario themed Airbnb. It would just appeal to my nerdy mm. side. Um, but if they had it right here on the beach as well, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's in Lisbon, Portugal. Yeah. Um, Although that does seem uh, like uh, an excuse. I reckon we should all go and rent it out for a weekend yeah. and do a geekly from Portugal. Seems like an excuse <laughs> for a trip to Portugal. I'm okay with that. <laughs> totally. Let's make that happen. <laughs> uh, now. Uh, while Catherine and I go and extend the Geekly budget quite significantly, uh, <laughs> after magically. this, yes, magically, after this next request, uh, we will be playing Game of Geeks internationally, magically, uh, and yeah, then I've got some questions all lined up for you. Exciting, excellent. Um, any any clues as to what they might be about? Are they going to be like surprise Hawaiian questions? I do have two surprise Hawaiian questions in there for you. <laughs> Well, I look forward to losing in both of those rounds. Um, <laughs> and after that, uh, we will be finding out once and for all whether you, the listeners, would fund live-action Pac-Man. Uh, but now, here's another song uh, requested by Mysterious Lurker in the chat room, who is who is now Mysterious Elaine, who also says there's a Mario-themed metro station in Stockholm in Sweden. Wow. Which is quite exciting. Um, but this song uh, was requested just by typing in doop doop so here's what what happens if you type that into spotify you're listening to the geekly chronicles which came first the geekly or the egg the egg obviously you fool the doop doop song or whatever i i this is not something i was aware of but catherine says she recognizes it yeah so i remember it on top of the pops this is this is clearly kind of mid-90s clearly one i have clearly one that may have passed me by regrettably i is old i don't think you were born gosh <laughs> presenter versus presenter geek versus geek it's a showdown of well it's a showdown it's game of geeks yes it is game of geeks time that's rather exciting. Uh, now, for this game of geeks, of course, Kez is the quiz master and uh, will be joining us live from Hawaii, hopefully, if uh, if we've still got you. Hello. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the idea of this segment. I'm still here. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes. I, it automatically muted me for some reason when I wasn't oh. talking for a while. Oh well, that's that's useful of it. Um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> but yes, uh, in true Game of Geeks style, Kez will be asking us questions with three clues, and the earlier we buzz in, the more points we get. Now, I'm barely prepared for this, as I was saying, because I'm meant to be the quiz master these days. 
oh, it's just a lot easier for the person that's not in the country to ask the questions because then, you know, uh, it's a bit less time delayed. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like Game of Geeks used to be in series past, really. With, uh, with me, me answering questions. Yeah. And well, I suppose it's never been me answering questions. That's true. That one other time that... With the minor caveat that this time around, uh, Kez can't thoroughly trounce me. No, I'll be the one doing the trouncing. Indeed you will. <laughs> Should we play the game? Oh, that's, that's the closest <laughs> I think we've ever come to smack talk on the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to trounce you so hard. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, right then. Uh, well, let's let's get on with the quiz. And as ever, any successful quiz will require buzzers. So this week, I go. Nice Pac-Man. Yeah. And I'll go. It's apparently yeah. eating a cherry. I'm told, but yeah. What noise do you make when you eat a cherry? Well, I don't. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, well, clearly. I don't really like cherries, so it's sort of a... Sort of a bleh, but... I'm more of an ooh. Okay. <laughs> I'm more Should... of a ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> Shall we get to the quiz? Shall we? Yes. <clears throat> are you ready for your first question? More or less. Fingers are on buzzers. More or less. Which mm-hmm. is it? More or less. Mostly less. <laughs> Mostly less, but, <laughs> but go but on I... anyway. Yeah. Okay, so your first question is a a film. Um, Film? Now, this film has currently had five different incarnations, not sequels, just five different incarnations, with a sixth planned for 2019. Ooh, interesting. Oh. I feel like I know this one. But I, I don't know, I should this, know one. this one, but I don't. Yeah, yeah, I have the same opinion. I think we're going to need another clue because neither of us have got it. <laughs> okay, it's last it, the the years in which there were instalments of this particular film franchise started back in 1953, then 1960, 2003, 2014, 2015. And soon to be 2019. 1953. That's going back quite a way. Yeah, I mean... Back when you were just little, Chris. Indeed. <laughs> back when... I think there's several glimmers in eyes back through <laughs> yeah. the generations. <laughs> yes, that was before my parents were born. <laughs> mm. Gosh. And we as old. <laughs> <laughs> as as we have established. Um, oh. Yeah, oh, God, I've no, no idea. Still stumped. Still stumped. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think we're going to need clue number three. Okay, clue number three. There is a real hook to this particular film. (laughs) And critics panned it. Is it Peter Pan? It is. (laughs) (laughs) It's the the crack puns are always a good help. (laughs) Yes, Yes, only just. I thought I'd have the puns for the final one. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Fantastic. All right. A point. I got go. a point. Now, there has been a, a lot of Peter Pan films, but none of them have been sequels. Ah. Okay. Interesting. Yep, I okay. did not know that. Yeah, no, I... People just love the story so much, they seem to keep just keep, keep redoing it. the same one. They are flogging that dead horse. Indeed they are. <laughs> okay. Zombie horse. Now... Second question, and this is, uh, to give you a bit of a a helping hand here, this is a Hawaiian-themed question. Oh, dear. Oh, no. (laughs) I don't know anything about Hawaii. (laughs) Now, this is something that is traditionally found in this part of the world, and it takes three years for a single one of these to reach maturation. Hmm. Things in Hawaii. And it's something that that grows... It takes years. three years for it to reach maturation. I oh. wish I could Google right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that would no, give it away. No Googling. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, it, would, it would make a lot of quiz shows more efficient if you could just Google the answer. Like, yep, yeah, there it is. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I have no idea. No, let's have another clue. Okay, you want another clue. Mm-hmm. All right. We do. Once... Harvested. 
harvested. These do not ripen. Hmm. I'm just going to have a guess and say... It's between two things. I don't know which to pick. Pick one of them and then I'll buzz in and say the other one. Pick left or right, Chris. Left. Coconut. Is not the right answer. Okay. <laughs> oh. I... Do you need the last clue? I'm going to try a guess. Go on. I'm going to go with... I have no idea if these even happen in Hawaii, but I'm going to go with pineapple. Is the right answer. Oh, damn it. Oh! oh my other answer. Yeah. Oh. Pineapples, pineapples were in fact native to and first discovered in Hawaii. Coconuts do not grow here. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, about either of them. Like, you know, do they yeah. even grow there? I just, I suppose well. when I think of Hawaii, I think of like. My final clue to you would have been if you'd never seen one, it'd look like a pine cone to you, because mm. that's what they were named after. I see. Okay. Two points to me. I'm doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our third question. This one Ooh. is related to a book or a series of books. Okay. okay. Interesting. Okay. Clue number one. The very last three words in this series of books is all was well. Oh. oh, it's between two things. <laughs> well, you say one of them. <laughs> uh, the Hunger Games? Is not Ooh, the right answer. No. <gasps> All is rarely well at the end of a Hunger Games book. Yes. <laughs> well, I thought of the end of the very last book, you know. Everything's still oh, no. terrible. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Do you need yeah. the next clue? I think I'm going to need the next clue. I... I... <laughs> I can't think of something. Yeah, go on, clue us again. Okay. Clue us up. You ready for the next clue? That's my other thing. <laughs> I was born ready. The very first line of the very first book features two of the main characters who were very proud to say that they were perfectly mm -hmm. normal. Thank you very much. Harry Potter. Is the correct answer. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> of course. My last clue was going to be there are seven of them. Yeah. And if you still couldn't get it, I would have just gone, it's Leviosa. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a certain point when the questions no, are just sort of handing it Leviosa. to me. It's Leviosa. It's Leviosa. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Anyway. Are you ready for your next question? Well, that makes it two points to Catherine. So, yes, next question. Okay, this is another bonus Hawaii question. Oh, Ooh, no. bonus Hawaii. Yep, yep. I've got two more questions. One of them's uh, one of them's about a TV show, but this one is another Hawaiian question. Okay. Hit us with your best shot. That's not a guess. This, <laughs> this thing was first created in Hawaii in 1879. Oh, 1879. What things were invented in 1879? Well, I don't know. No. Uh, Next clue. The this thing was most commonly linked in the mid twentieth century to a certain George Formby Jr. Oh, oh, um, they play the ukulele in. Yes, Hawaii. is the correct answer. Yes, a ukulele. The ukulele is such an important part of Hawaiian culture here that in the lobby of my hotel, there is a Starbucks, but next to it, three times the size, is a ukulele shop. Wow. Gosh. I may buy one and bring it back with me. Just, <laughs> just for the sake of it. Just see so um, George Formby. The ukulele on. shop almost directly below me. Wow. Ooh. Well, there well, we does go. That, does that, does that put me to one point in the lead? Two points to Catherine. You are one point in the lead as we go Ooh. into the final question. Okay, the Ooh, final question. Goal. This relates to a television series. Oh, okay. Come on. This popular and award-winning TV series has run for two seasons. The second season is currently still airing. Oh. <laughs> go ahead. I'm gonna, I mean, oh, oh dear. Oh, I'm doubting myself now. I'm gonna go for Hunted. 
is not the right answer. Damn, because that's that's the only thing I'm aware of that is currently mm-hmm. in the second series. I'm going to have a guess well, as well, because I might on. as well, uh, because I accidentally watched some of it yesterday. The Missing. Is not the right answer. Okay, right. Ooh. Oh, okay, yes, your that's... second clue. Mm-hmm. This television series is set in New York City. Okay. Oh. New York City. What have I just seen? What have I just seen something about that was something to do with New York? Oh, I don't know. I feel like oh, jeez. Obviously, loads of stuff is set in New York, but yeah, I think we need the next clue. Okay. The main character in the series, who uh, the actor which portrayed this has won awards for his portrayal, but this, uh, this, this main series follows a young man who works at a cyber security company called Allsafe. <laughs> Go ahead. I, this, is a, this is a show I have reviewed on our other show, Teleblob, and this is a show I despise. Mr. Robot. <laughs> Is the correct answer. (laughs) (sighs) I can't believe that just won me a point. We are tied, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct. We are. So. All right, I'm going to need to do some quick googling. (laughs) (laughs) This is this is the point in Game of Geeks. I suppose as this can't really count, this could just be a friendly. She says, hoping (laughs) that uh, hoping that I won't trounce her at the. uh... I've got a backup question, but it's Hawaii related. I'm okay. Oh, with that. go on then. Okay. This is what we call the Wikipedia round, <laughs> where uh, we no. haven't got. <laughs> yeah. Hawaii, as I've said before, is um, is very far away from continental US. It was actually it was a US territory and an army base, and it was made a state uh, just at the just kind of after the after the Second World War. Actually, it was in the '60s that it was made a, a state. So it's quite a new state. Um, but Hawaii is the only United State, or well, yeah, US state, that can grow what? Pineapples. <laughs> is not the right answer. Pineapples can also grow in Florida. Ah, uh, well, it was worth a guess. Catherine, would you like to uh, to have a guess at this one? Oh, um. <laughs> Uh, dates. <laughs> dates. I have no idea. We can grow dates in England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't mean that, I don't know, there's not like some kind of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Eloquently put as ever. <laughs> okay, hang on, I'm scanning through. <laughs> <laughs> to get us a new clue to the thing. Yeah. Oh dear. I love how you totally had a tiebreaker question prepared. Mm. Yeah, well, I had a tiebreaker question prepared. Neither of you got it. <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay. There is a certain kind of nut that is grown in Hawaii uh, that is the um, that is produced more here than anywhere else. Can you guess which type of nut? This Go is ahead. a complete guess. Macadamia. Is the right answer. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have no idea where that came from. That's that's it's not even... my favourite uh... types of nut. White chocolate and macadamia nut cookie is one of my favourites. I genuinely don't think I've ever eaten one. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, but that does mean, Chris, that you've just edged ahead. Indeed. And that means at the end of the quiz that... Against all odds, this week's winner is... <laughs> Yes, we're not quite sure how it happened either. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. Um, It's worth pointing out that that, uh, that you were very, very even in that one, and it was only by guessing some complete random stuff that I found by Googling (laughs) Hawaiian facts (laughs) facts <laughs> that I was able to get that. So Because that's my party trick. Chris, on your narrow win. Incidentally, Hawaii is the only state that can grow coffee. Oh, oh okay. 
There you go. Yep, I've just now that now that I'm allowed to look at the chat room again because you people try and help <laughs> us. Um, I can I can see Elaine uh, did get the coffee question, so well done. Um, and uh, we've. We've we've had a few a few things. We uh, there's, there's uh, a woman born in Hawaii in 1879 that uh, Elaine also thought was the uh, was was the thing that was produced in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so no, but yeah. interestingly enough, uh, there are there are lots of people here that I've spoken to that remember Hawaii before it was a state. Uh, Hawaii actually has one of the longest life expectancies in the world as well, <laughs> which people that I've spoken to put down to. Uh, Lots of happiness, lots of fish, and generally not caring about anything that uh, that would stress them out. So uh, it's a very stress-free lifestyle over here. Like I said, I think we should we should move. That seems like a pretty great attitude to life. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much for that uh, international game of geeks, and uh, yeah, in, enjoy Hawaii. Um, coming up. After this, uh, we will be joined by Beth McClure-Webster from Eggheads, and we'll be talking to some Star Trek fans that uh, you and Kez, Catherine, met at the Destination Star Trek Europe event last weekend. Yeah, that was a great time. I'm very excited about that, yeah. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to hear that back. Um, yeah, so before we play the next request, uh, here's just a reminder to keep listening for that winning word. This week's winning word is Cyclops. It's the Geekly Chronicles. It's like a boiled egg, only the soldiers are geeks and the egg is a studio and, oh, now I'm hungry. And now we are joined on the show by a very special guest. She is a brand new egghead uh, on the BBC Quiz Show. Uh, It's Beth McClaw-Webster. Hello. Hello, Chris. Hi. Nice to be here. (laughs) <laughs> nice to have you on the show. Um, so, first and foremost, as I said, you're an egghead, but could you explain what that is for our listeners that are outside the UK? Okay, so egg, Eggheads is a, a quiz show that's been going for uh, about 12, 14 years now, and it's uh, we're a team of five people, you know, normal, everyday people who know each other um, in everyday life, be them from the same club or same quiz league or do something of a of similar nature and they try and beat the egghead at quiz to win some money so what yeah. qualifies an egghead to be an egghead oh so um the eggheads have all won um either multiple uh, shows um so daphne who is our retired egghead now she was on loads and loads of quiz shows back in the in the 70s and 80s um, we have um, Pat Gibson, who is uh, one of the million, uh, who wants to be a millionaire, millionaire millionaires. Um, mm. Him and uh, Judith also won a, a million pound. Um, we've got um, multiple European, um, world and British quiz champion in both Pat Gibson and uh, Kevin Ashman. And then you have me, who's just won a quiz show to become an egghead. Which was very impressive. Yes. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it was a, it was quite hard fought. Uh, um, there was a ladies, uh, ladies competition and a, and a men's competition because they needed one of each and you one of each. And I was lucky enough to win the women's um, yeah, competition. They were, uh, they were some grueling episodes, I think. <laughs> they were, yeah. Watching them back was still was grueling as well. I was still looking wow. you know, through my fingers at, <laughs> on the sofa. Wow. Now you've been on yeah, TV yeah, as an egghead for a few weeks. Are people starting to recognise you when you're out and about? Oh, not as yet. No, I had a I had a brief double take in Tesco's, um, <laughs> which uh, I was I was there um, with one of my children, looking rather harassed, trying to weigh bananas. Um, but other than that, I was recognised by a parent uh, at my son's beaver colony when she said, um, "Can I ask you a really weird question?" I said, "Yes." She said, "Did I?" you on tv well yes you did yes yes you did and, <laughs> um, but that was it and I, I vaguely knew her anyway so it's not really recognized by a stranger not been stopped in the street yet um, one thing I've, I've always wondered um because obviously we see him on eggheads and, and kind of hear him on the radio what, what is jeremy vine really like can, can you uh, spell <laughs> any means oh, jeremy <laughs> is uh, is a really really nice man he's as you expect exceptionally tall so i'm i'm not very tall myself so i was like always having to look up for him um he he's 
really interested in what everybody has got to say, whether if you're an egghead or if you're one of the, the other contestants. He's interested in everything else you can put around an answer. And he's always making little notes and, and jotting on um, pieces of paper. He's such a lovely man. So other than eggheads, what's your favourite TV quiz show? Well, there's, there's recently been a debate about my, what, what my favourite quiz show is, or whether it's actually a quiz or whether it's a game show. That's um, Only Connect. Ah. Um, are you a fan? Yes, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, I love Only Connect. It's, I was lucky to be on season five, I think. Mm. It gets all your synapses going and making the links of, yes. um, of, of trying to get the connection through the rand- seemingly random random clues, as yeah. uh, Victoria Corrin Mitchell says. So do you have to kind of sign over your right to go on any more quiz shows when yeah. you become an egghead? <laughs> yeah, you kind of do. It's uh, yeah, so I, I, Luckily enough, I got all the ones in I really wanted to do before I managed to become an egghead. <laughs> so uh, what, what first got you into quizzing? What, what was the, the catalyst to start it all off? Oh, I, I don't know. I've been interested in, in facts for, um, since... I, I can remember I was one of those children that used to uh, read the Guinness Book of Records mm. for, for pleasure um, at about age 10. Um, used to go to quizzes with my parents at school. Um, I, I kind of sort of left it behind when I was at university um, and went into, did some music in, instead. Um, but after I left there and they brought Mastermind back to the telly, um, I thought, you know, I've always wanted to go on that. And uh, so when it when it came back onto onto telly, it's like, right, it's it's now my chance, and I I, I managed to get on um, in 2004, and uh, just carried on since then. So do you ever find yourself revising? <laughs> oh, all the time. Yeah, there are there are list learners um, in quiz. Um, I'm not one of those people. I cannot sit down and read a list of things and remember it um, automatically. Um, I have to have some some other tag, some other um, relationship with the fact. So I can relate a piece of music to a particular time in my life that will link it to a year. Um, and things like that. So if I'm playing Pop Master, it's another quiz I really love uh, to play. I say Radio 2 um, yeah, I, in the morning. Yeah, I have my radio um, set to it to come on at 10.15 so that I don't miss it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they always have a in what year were these, depending oh, on yes. how I've made the link in my brain, I can get to what I was doing when those songs were playing so mm. I knew what sort of time of year it was. So um, I, need a, I need a specific link to, to my facts. But you can revise. I mean, there is a lot of, of, of reading. And if you, I find I remember things better if I write it down rather than if I just read it. You've told us a bit about how you got started quizzing. Do you have a proudest moment in your quizzing history? Oh, well, that will have to be winning Make Me an Egghead, really. I've, um, it was the first show I'd ever won. I've been on loads of shows, never won any of them, never won a single penny from quizzing. Oh, I did win a pointless trophy. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm very jealous money. of that. <laughs> oh, are you? Oh, it, it sits proudly on my on my mantelpiece, and my, my son, every time he sees it on the telly, goes, Mum, you've got one of those. It's like, yes, I have. <laughs> Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen Pointless recorded a couple of times and I'm always surprised at the size of the trophy. It's so much smaller than I expect it to be, but, but it's very yeah, cute. It, it, it's very weighty as it well. <laughs> uh, so so other than that, sort of, um, yeah, Make Me an Egghead is uh, the first one I want. It happens to be the best one because it gives me a, um, a career in quiz. What could be better? So as you you have a, a career in quiz, as as a, a quizzer and now an egghead, it's sort of your job to know a bit about everything, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know um, sort, of, sort of jack of all trades, master of none type type philosophy. Hmm. Um, I know a little bit about a lot of things and I constantly surprise my other team, um, my uh, quiz team with coming out with like um, boxing weights and... <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, uh, other random things. They they sort of like look at me and go, "How, how do you know that?" Yeah, it's, it's, you just pick up things here and there. And there, I do have my weak spots: history and geography. Um, mm. So, if any egghead, potential egghead competitors are listening to your show, they'll know to pick me against history yes. and geography. Um, <laughs> With that in mind, we have a few topical questions for you. It's World Egg Day today. Can you tell us anything interesting about eggs that most people don't know? Uh, well, mine's more about an egg-producing 
animal rather than the egg itself. Mm-hmm. I hope that's all right. Um, my egg fact is about um, the egg-laying mammals, so the monotremes like uh, duck-billed platypus and, and echidnas. So they lay eggs but are also able to produce milk to, to suckle their young mm. and are therefore able to make their own custard. <laughs> wow. I had never thought about it that way. <laughs> yeah. no, that makes a lot of sense when uh, when yeah. you think about it, doesn't it? Once and for all, can you clear up that annoying chicken and egg question, which really did come first? Well, in my opinion, dinosaurs laid eggs. And dinosaurs, even though they are related to birds, are not birds. So they are able to lay eggs. They are not birds. Therefore, the egg came first. Mm. There you go. I think that would be Heard it here first. Yeah. my theory on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm mm, glad we've cleared like that, that one up. Yeah, <laughs> I feel good yeah. about that. <laughs> Excellent. It's been 950 years since the Battle of Hastings. We learn all about things like the Battle of Hastings in school, but are there any things that you can think of that we learn in school that maybe aren't quite true? That's well, my, my, my thing about this one is a bit of a re-evaluation of what we were taught in school. So uh, I did a little straw poll in my office um, and uh, we were all taught that camel's humps store water. Is that what you were taught at school as well? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camel's humps don't store water. They store fat. So, and then they break down the fat <laughs> to get to get the energy. So, so it's not a, something we didn't learn, but something we should have learnt, probably. Now, this week, I'm asking all of these questions to you from Hawaii. Uh, What should I definitely check out while I'm here? So I'm interested in astronomy. So uh, the place I would go would be the Mauna Kea Observatory. Uh, It's one of the only places you can drive to from sea level up to 14,000 feet. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah, so... um, uh, but you have to stop off uh, halfway up about 9,000 9, feet to get acclimatised, and that's where the public observatories are, and you mm-hmm. can um, use the, the telescopes, and they have a daily um, public viewing session that you, you, can, you can do. But you can drive all the way up to the, to the scientific observatories as well. Oh, that's really cool. I had no idea. Yeah. Kez, go check <laughs> yeah, that I'd out. I'd love to go. <laughs> yeah. So, finally, two things. Number one, what advice would you give to someone that is looking to get into quizzing? Oh, well, I don't expect to make any money out of it. Uh, just keep practising, really. Do quizzes as much as you can. I do general knowledge crosswords and read lots. Include things that you're not really that interested in. So I know I'm not very good at history and geography, so therefore the things I really need to read up on, but they're not the things that interest me. But I've still got to do it. Come to quiz events. So there's lots of quiz events you can go to around uh, uh, Great Britain and um, uh, North America as well. Um, join quiz leagues. London has a good one. Um, uh, Bolton, Manchester, Liverpool, they've all got quiz leagues. There's also some online quizzes you can join that run in a league format. So there's the, the Learned League in the US um, and there's a 2020 quiz in, in the UK. Um, the pub quizzes, just quiz as much as you can. And you, you're bound to, to, bound to get better somewhere online. And Uh, If anyone listening fancies themselves as either an egghead competitor or an egghead, how can they kind of square off against you? Oh well, we, we've um, we've been calling for for new uh, new contestants, um, so I'm sure that um, you'll be able to find a flyer on uh, Twitter, or if I send it to uh, Geek Chronicles, they can uh, repost the flyer as well. Um, or we're always looking, we're always looking for contestants uh, to come on and and give us a go, as it were. So we'll, you'll mm. need uh, five more friends. So it's uh, five five in the team and one spare, just in case. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah just give it a go best of luck to everyone that applies and you know happy quizzing Um, finally uh, Beth we ask all of our guests if they have a request that they would like for us to play Uh, so do you have a song for us oh well I I should go for um, something that my husband and I played during our wedding ceremony we walked down the aisle to ELO's Mr Blue Sky so I'd like Uh that please thank you Chris oh lovely Well, uh, thank you very much, Beth, for joining us. Yeah, congratulations on uh, your new uh, egghead status. And thank you so much for joining us. It's been lots of fun. Oh, thank you. It was fun, yeah. Yeah. 
And here's the song. It's the Geekly Chronicles. Geeks to the left of you, geeks to the right of you, geeks right in front of you. Into the Valley of Radio rode the Brave Chronicles. Damn it, Jim, we're presenters, not doctors. As you may have heard me mention a few times on this show already, I'm in Hawaii enjoying some sun, sea and quite a lot of sushi, to be honest with you. Uh, But last weekend, mere hours before I boarded my flight, Catherine and I went to a very special birthday party. This year, Star Trek turns 50 years old, and last weekend in Birmingham, the cast and crew of six television series and 13 films came together to celebrate the occasion with fans from across Europe. Now, Catherine and I have been big fans of Star Trek for as long as either of us can remember, but we were curious, what brought people to Star Trek, and what does it really mean to them? My name is Tom. Melissa. Tim. So you are a Star Trek family, is that right? Uh, yes. Correct, yeah. So I'm here, Tom, I'm here with my fiance Melissa, and my soon-to-be father-in-law, as of next year. We're not having a Star Trek wedding, just so you know. Um, <laughs> but it will be, it will be themed. Um, so yeah, we are, yeah, Star Trek family. How long have you been into Star Trek for? Um, not as long as these guys. I think because I met Liz about uh, nearly ten years ago now. And um, when she first met me, she said, oh, just to warn you, my dad's a bit of a fan of Star Trek. And I got home and it was just everywhere. No, no, no. He's not, he's not too bad. But um, I think slowly over the years, he's sort of shown me more and more of it. And I've, I've got into it. What was it like growing up with a, a Trekkie for a, a dad? Well, I just remember it, we just have it on every evening. We just watch it. So I just remember watching Generation first, growing up with that. And then, and then sort of seeing Voyager after that. So... so. My name is Laurie Beth Bisbee. My name is Gabriel Dongi. My name is Terence Scott. What got you into Star Trek? I just enjoyed the series, the original series, which was what they first introduced me to, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I... We we watched it from the beginning. That and he's a science geek. Yeah. Yes. Always help. I watched the reruns because I've always loved all of the series. And it wasn't just older families either. Some fans attending the celebration weren't even alive when there was last Star Trek being made for television. What brought them there? My name's Will. I'm 12. So what got you into Star Trek? Well, when I was a lot younger, about, probably about six or seven, uh, it was on it was on like replays on TV and I would just watch it. Um, and then when I was about 11 or 10, um, I started watching all the episodes in order and I really got into it yeah I don't think it's hard to get in Star Trek for me it was really easy because I, I just think it's amazing so yeah. I think it's yeah it's the deep message behind it yeah it's really good, good, good morals and stuff like that and I'm, I'm, my name's Jack I don't know I just love them, the actual stories and the plots of it I just really enjoy it I think it's actually helping people in the world in some places that's me People don't just come to pay their respects at an event like this. The cosplay game here was very strong. For those not in the know, cosplay is like extreme dressing up, where people create amazing outfits that match their fandom to a T. Pun intended. We're here with... Uh, Apollo Cosplay, alias, um, my actual name is Phoebe Osbergeon. You're here as, as Spock. Why Spock today? Um, I honestly think that he made the series. When you think about the original series, you often think about Kirk being the captain, and he's obviously the main character, but his relationship with Spock defines the programme. Do you do other Star Trek-related cosplays? No, this is my first Star Trek cosplay, but in the last year I've started cosplaying on a more professional level and I also make props, so I thought that this year, this Star Trek con, I would make a cosplay and wear it to him. Um, What got you into cosplaying? Um, It was actually Tom Hiddleston and his Loki character um, from Marvel, just because he's such an insane character with a lot of depth and his costume was amazing, so I made that. And then, from then on, it, there was no hope for me. I just had to keep going. I'm dressed as the ball from Star Trek The Next Generation. Why the ball? I just think they're badass. What made you think of doing cosplay? Well, it actually started last year when I went to MCM Manchester Comic Con. I just, I just started playing um, um, King in, Kingdom Hearts 2, and then I just thought about going to Sora, and, well, started from there. And uh, as this is radio, what have you come dressed as today? 
I am operations. I'm a tactical officer. How about yourself? Operations and a scientist. I'm Spock from the Voyage Home, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. How much work actually went into it? What did you have to do to make this? Well, mostly I, I bought like the um, like actual armor, but then I got like tons of wires and then just chopped them up into pieces. There was going to be a, an eyepiece, but it fell apart and ended up get, getting covered in blood. Blood? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's an authentic eyepiece. Then. Yes. So <laughs> quite literally, blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this costume. Um, I'm not cosplaying a specific person, but I, I'm, I'm imagining that I am from Deep Space Nine. I am one of the crew. I am Commander. So. But has Star Trek really had that big an impact on the world? I don't know. I think it's just something that could happen in the not too distant future. Then you get the mobile phones come after it. It seems everything they're doing seems to be coming true. Yeah, it makes you think about the future, and it's kind of like, oh, is that what it's going to be like? It inspires so much. And mobile phones have come from Star Trek. You know, iPads have come from Star Trek. I'm sure, anyway. Star Trek is is not about like the action and the battles and stuff like that. It's about it's about it's about the deeper message behind it. Uh, And don't don't just judge it by its cover. Don't just think, oh, Star Trek is just for nerds and stuff like that. Star Trek, for me, is all about the diversity. You can see it from the moment you set eyes on the bridge. You've got um, so many different people from different backgrounds, like the first interracial kiss on TV. And there's a huge satisfaction knowing that the production company of Star Trek had to fight to keep it on air. And there's a lot of hope for that. If people can keep fighting for new equality, new diversity, then there's some hope for us later on. I just, as I always say, whenever, say, so I went through bullying through my life, and as I always just say, I just, they may, they may say what they like to me, but really, insult to injury, they just, I've just grown used to, like, people don't really, I've just grown not to care about what people have to say now. It's like, I like this, and I don't care if other people don't. It's, up, it's up everyone's choice. Gene Roddenberry had a dream about how he wanted the future to go. We have the potential to go there. It's, it's, always, it's always that possibility that looms just over the hill. All we have to do is take those steps, and it's possible. It's, Star Trek holds out the possibility that we can be better. Well, as we celebrate 50 years of Star Trek, it's obvious now more than ever that life really can imitate art. The world we live in might just be a little better as a result of Gene Roddenberry's amazing vision. From flip phones to medical scanners to the very idea that world peace could exist in our lifetimes, I don't think I've ever been more proud to call myself a Trekkie. Live from the side of an active volcano in Hawaii, this is Kaz Guyan asking you all to live long and prosper. You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles. We don't want your money, but if we did, we'd spend it on stuff like this. It's Would You Fund It? Do you love Pac-Man? Do you feel restricted by your screen? Do you wish you could be more round and yellow? It sure gets lonely playing Pac-Man all day. Join us in our 32,000 square foot immersive real-life Pac-Man experience where you can collect balls, run from ghosts, and wear a skin-tight yellow unitard with up to seven friends. I feel like a yellow ninja sneaking around this maze. Be pursued by our real-life Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde as you charge around our maze collecting pack dots in your pack pack. You should have seen that ghost face when I slapped a cherry on it. Play Pac-Man for real. Get your tickets on our website now. Vote now at gkly.co slash fund it. It's time for this week's Tumble Fumble. Are you ready for a scroll in the hay? Am I ever? <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> what you've been you've been truffling through the vast forests of the internet this week. What have you found? Okay, so I've got the usual three things for you. Um, the first thing is Star Trek related, which feels kind of appropriate. Yep. Uh, so this is a site called Chief O'Brien at Work dot com. Okay. Uh, it's it's kind of the it's the Tumblr blog format. Somebody's just obviously, um, you know, using a domain, so you just have to go to Chief O'Brien at Work dot com. I see. Yeah. Um, 
and it's a comic strip and essentially it's all about chief o'brien in his transporter room which i know probably won't mean too much to you chris but uh, in star trek the next generation uh, chief o'brien is really the transporter chief so he just operates the the transporter in the in a little transporter room right um so you kind of imagine that when he's not beaming someone down or beaming someone up <laughs> The two it options must get of kind of uh, lonely and a little dull in the transporter room. So this is all yeah. his thoughts and woes and little conversations with the computer. Um, yeah, uh, go and have a look if you're a fan of uh, dull jobs, should we say? Uh, space <laughs> travel and ennui. <laughs> um, Interesting you know, not combination. Too much I can tell you about, you know, it's very visual. So uh, just go check it out. All righty then. You're a Star Trek fan. Chiefobrienatwork.com. Uh, Indeed. What's the next thing? Uh, all Tumblr things uh, this week, which Ooh. is uh, is kind of rare. But, Appropriate um, for a Tumble fumble. Really. I know, right? It's almost like we planned it. Yeah. Uh, so As if we planned this. <laughs> I know. So the next thing is a Tumblr called uh, Two Kinds of People. Right. So it's two, the number two, kindsofpeople.tumblr.com. Okay. Uh, and this is just a little blog with illustrations of two different things. And, you know, you either fall into one camp or the other, probably. Um, yeah. You know, I like see that. The, the way that you eat, you know, corn on the cob, for example. Um, oh, whether yeah, or not you play Pokemon Go, <laughs> you know, you either do or you don't. Um, whether you put uh, syrup and butter on your pancakes or not. Or not, yeah. Uh, whether you chew your pencils or not. Yeah. Whether you drink sparkling water or still water. Mm. Um, obviously, there's people that, you know, don't really like drinking water at all. <laughs> but, you know, if you had to, which would you pick? Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you go full screen when you watch YouTube videos or not? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's quite interesting. And some of them take me a second to get what it's what it's going for with the little illustration. But, um, yeah. yeah, so I find it's, it's quite fascinating. I, I sort of thought, oh, this, this blog isn't there. But I ended up scrolling and scrolling and scrolling for ages <laughs> just looking at all these different pictures so it's quite kind of uh, addictive yeah n the number two kinds of people uh, dot tumblr dot com hmm. um, and the third thing uh, I found um, kind of by accident really um, this is a little web comic called blazers at dawn right so it's blazers at dawn dot tumblr dot com. Uh, I will tweet links to all of these uh, just um, in just the, the moments following the fumble. Yeah. Um, the so, post fumble moments. So in amongst um, these kind of day to day life observation web web, web comic bits, um, there's also little comics of uh, Wolverine versus Cyclops from X Men. Right. And they're really funny. Um, so obviously you can kind of filter on the X-Men tag and just look at um, those comics if you want to. But mm -hmm. actually just the day-to-day -day life observation ones are really great as well. So this is another one of those blogs that I just spent ages scrolling through, scrolling, scrolling. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's blazers at dawn uh, .tumblr com for uh, your fix of Wolverine versus Cyclops. Indeed. Yeah. I like this. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to read all of these. Yeah, I particularly like the the most recent little little web comic. I like that one. Yes, <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah, go and have a look. Um, again, web comics, all visual. Um, so not great for radio. So just go check yeah. them out if they sound good to you. Well, and I'll get tweeting those links. Indeed. Uh, thank you, Catherine. That was uh, most informative and interesting uh and 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 well done on having them all as tumblers um <laughs> as, as as does occasionally happen uh as you said you can see highlights of everything catherine has discovered on twitter at gklyco and in a moment uh we will be opening a very special package mm -hmm. uh but for now here is a request that we are playing for misty the geekly chronicles is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? Now, we have a package. We do have a package. It's a rather exciting package. Mm -hmm. What's in the box, Catherine? Well, this is a package that we've ordered from Terence Eden's Cool Stuff for Five Pounds and Under blog at fiverfun.tumblr.com. Uh, we kind of featured that on the, the fun ball last week, and we, yep. uh, we spoke to, to Terence. So if you missed that, you can go catch up um that was a brilliant uh chat that we had and it's a very fun uh blog um he posts kind of cool stuff that you can buy for under five pounds prosaic really hmm. um if you say so i am enjoying saying package a lot for this feature 
Oh, uh. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, last time it was Tetris magnets, as we said earlier, but this week we've no idea what's in this package. No, mystery package in my hands. Um, so let's open it <laughs> and uh, and see what we got. Yeah, open that up. You can tell this is happening because you can mm-hmm. hear the tearing. <laughs> oh, oh, what have I got? I have got... Oh, a tea sub tea infuser. Oh, that's a oh, little yellow a little submarine. Yellow submarine <laughs> that you fill with tea. Oh, it's that's so adorable. adorable. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, this is going to be a problem. I can sense with this feature that I'm just going to want all the things. <laughs> well, now we know what they are. You can buy more of all of the things. Ooh, they I are know. they are pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry, yeah. that was me like headbutting the microphone. <laughs> and then Nicely going, done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow, a little yellow submarine that you can infuse tea in. Oh, I love that. So cute. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that you'll win the mystery item in our winning words competition as well, if the uh, as well as the geekly prizes that we've already told you about. So, uh, so get those calls in if you hear the word or if you've already heard it. Uh, mm-hmm. After this next song, we'll be looking at the results from Would You Fund It and uh, finding out once and for all uh, whether or not live action Pac Man is is you know worth worth a fund worth a fund. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Divine Comedy. It's the Geekly Chronicles. Indeed it is. Uh, Yeah, we are rapidly approaching the end of the show. Lines will close for the winning word competition at five minutes to nine, which uh, by my estimation is in about two minutes. So if you think you heard the word, get those calls in now. It's like everyone's crowdfunding these days, isn't it? It is. Uh, We're not. We are fake crowdfunding. Uh, But the thing we have been fake crowdfunding today uh, is the live action Pac-Man experience Mm -hmm. where you don your yellow unitard and race around a maze and get tackled by ghosts. I think it was the yellow unitard that was selling it to me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but let's have a look at the results for Would You Fund It? So we've been asking you throughout the show on our website and on Twitter whether or not you would fund it. And it seems like with dun, 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 64% of the vote, <laughs> you would not fund oh. the Pac-Man live action extravaganza. I am quite surprised by that. Yeah. I thought, I, I thought this was a funder. I thought this was a funder, to be honest with you. Okay. But fair enough. The the, the listeners have spoken. Have spoken. Uh, and uh, and they have deemed it not to be fundable. Fundworthy. <laughs> fair enough. But a bat with a ghastly's <laughs> face on it. That's right up their street. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> We're beginning to to find out more and more about our listeners as mm-hmm. uh, time goes on. So wow. yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh that's that's that. That's Next that time. <laughs> yeah. I'm slightly disappointed, I'll be honest. Next time it will be Kez's turn to pitch. Mm. Uh, once Kez is back from Hawaii, excitingly. So uh we'll see what happens next time. But right now you're in the lead with one funded thing. One whole thing. I know. Oh, yeah. And it was a hundred percenter. What a way to start a series. I rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mathematically speaking, yes, you do. (laughs) I'm always speaking mathematically. All the best people are. It's like Fox News, only we never promised factual accuracy. Indeed. Uh, So, lines have now closed for the winning words competition. Please do not call as you will not be put through, but you may still be charged. Uh, Nobody got it. No. I think we were too sneaky with this one. Yeah, perhaps we were. Yes. Uh, Just a reminder of what the word was. This week's winning word is Cyclops. Cyclops. Mm. And we said it when? During the Tumble Fumble. Yes. Yep. Uh, When we were looking at the the Wolverine and Cyclops comic. Indeed. We said Uh, Cyclops twice, mm. I seem to remember. So I have my little... uh, Tea sub, tea infuser. Yes. I'm guessing I'm not allowed to keep it. No, you do not get to keep it. I mean, we can probably buy you another one as Mm -hmm. you like it so much, but that (laughs) prize will roll over to next (gasps) episode's. uh, So it'll be a double five pound thing prizer next episode. The prize value for next episode will be 
at least ten pounds. Well, up to ten well, pounds. Well, up to ten. Yeah, <laughs> not at least. That wasn't up five to. pounds. <laughs> <laughs> up, up to, to ten five. whole pounds. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, so do join us again for our next show, which will be on the. 28th of October. October, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, where we will be doing winning words again. And uh, of course, we'll have all your usual favourites as well. Mm. So thank you to our wonderful guest, Beth McClaw Webster, um, who joined us to chat about all things quizzing. Yes, that was a wonderful interview. Thank you for joining us. And we have tweeted the flyer to take part in Eggheads if that's something that tickles your fancy. Uh, thanks also to everyone who sent in requests, tweeted us, took part in the chat room and generally got involved with the show. And thanks also to Kez for joining us live all the way from Hawaii. Indeed. And uh, as Chris has already said, we'll be back uh, with episode three in a couple of weeks on the 28th of October uh, with, you know, all your usual favourite features. Another five pound thing. Another uh, awesome guest. And uh, Kez will be back. Yes. Hooray. I'll, I'll not be in the scary chair next time. <laughs> I am currently... chair is a little terrifying. Yes. <laughs> not only is this the producer's chair, so I have control over the entire show right now, but also the chair itself is quite big and looming. So I feel like it's, uh, it's quite... Well, quite apt, really, that the producer should sit in a big scary chair, but it's, it's quite a daunting experience to... Take it. up the role. Uh, I was trying to come up with a new way of saying sit in it without being <laughs> rude, but I, I just couldn't. What's rude about sitting in it? Well, nothing's rude chair. about sitting in it. The the ways I was going to say sitting in it oh, are a bit okay. more a uh, bit more non broadcast friendly. Oh, okay. My my <laughs> brain hadn't gone there for once. <laughs> Indeed, I'm surprised. Um, Who am I and what have I done with me? Yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't believe we got, to the, we got to the end of the show. We survived. We did. And, uh, and, and yeah. It's Kez, a Christmas miracle. It is a Christmas miracle. We're not allowed <laughs> to talk about Christmas yet. Um, Elaine wonders if this chair doubles up as an industrial loom. As I said, it was looming. Possibly. So, quite possibly i mean i've never tried yeah we have no evidence to the contrary so it may well do <laughs> but yeah thank you for joining us for the show it's been very very fun slightly disappointed by pac-man but it's been a generally good one so far uh the prize will roll over so all that remains for us now is to say that from me chris from me Catherine, and from kez all the way in sunny hawaii it's goodbye. Goodbye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Content was researched and vaguely fudged together by Chris, Catherine and Kez, who are also your hosts for this evening's show. The Geekly Chronicles is a tiny kettle production. Any reference to any persons or things living or dead was probably in error. What is reality anyway? Don't take the blue pill, live long and prosper, wear sunscreen. Mm-hmm.